behalf of the team, the next uh, talk will be presented by Marco. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm giving the talk on behalf of Yevgeny that uh, couldn't come today. I'm uh, Marco Sciliuzzo, I'm a postdoc at uh, PFL in Tobias Kipperman Group in Switzerland. And today I would like to show you our uh, recent result, uh, our recent progress towards uh, making a Josephson traveling wave parametric amplifier based on um, the trilayer process. Is it this? Or? Okay, I didn't press hard enough. Um, okay, so maybe the first, uh, after the last uh, talk, maybe we don't need so many cells, but still uh, we want to use this three-layer process because uh, you can get very small footprint on circuitry, so small uh, um, circuit footprint means m many more cells on a single chip. And uh, in our experiment, we use um, um, the traveling wave parametric amplifier for exploring um, quantum regime in circuit optomechanics. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, we think that um, having uh, or studying more the trilayer could help uh, mitigating uh, losses, especially from the dielectric. And uh, we plan to use this platform for doing some um, uh, study of quantum metamaterial uh, in the future. So uh, of course, we are not the first, <laughs> definitely, to uh, make this implementation. Uh, we all know the MIT Lincoln Lab Tupa, where um, a nonlinear chain made of Josephson, Josephson junction and uh, uh, periodically loaded uh, with the uh, impedance phase um, for phase matching uh, made of um, resonators uh, has been used for uh, making a, um, a traveling wave parametric amplifier. And uh, of course, many more progress has been done in the field. Here, just a report a few of them uh, because, because of time. The list will take many slides. So uh, this is what we want to implement. Uh, exactly as um, uh, um, I mentioned before, is a, a, a nonlinear chain made of many Josephson junction uh, and uh, shunted with uh, periodically uh, resonators in order to um, obtain the phase matching. Uh, this is our uh, first uh, iteration device, and um, the sides are six by six millimeter. And you can see here a micrograph. Uh, that zoom in the different uh, element of the circle, the, oh, of the circuit, the different part of the Josephson junction a chain and the phase matching structure. So how do we fabricate this? We, we start from uh, um, commercially available three layer, uh, where you have a stack of niobium, the Josephson junction made of aluminium, and then uh, another uh, layer of niobium. And uh, for fabrication reason, we have uh, a bottom play, bottom. Um, uh, layer made of aluminum. Then we define uh, by lithography our junction. We anodized the top uh, uh, remaining metal, and you can see that the color really changed from uh, shiny uh, metallic to this brown, um, to this uh, brownish color on the wafer. And then we define uh, our uh, islands where uh, uh, the main junction will uh, recede, and you can see our uh, SCM picture with the zoom on the junction. And uh, uh, the fabrication continue, depositing silicon oxide and uh, um, making um, electrochemical polish, uh, electromechanical polishing, chemical, sorry, chemical mechanical polishing. And we achieve uh, a pretty good uh, uniformity over four inch wafer, up to 13 nanometer uh, um, in variation. And then um, other three lithography step where we open the, um, the, um, uh, connection for vias, we uh, define our capacitor structure, and, and we again open a, p a connection for the Josephson junction. And finally, we deposit and pattern the top layer. This is what more or less it would look like uh, as a cartoon, and this is what uh, indeed uh, look like in the in the picture. And uh, you can see that, of course, the 3D structure is very important, and many of these capacitors have uh, this uh, silicon oxide. Um, uh, layers as the electric. So we characterize the junction and we, uh, in our uh, traveling wave parametric amplifier uh, design, we use five uh, uh, micro, micro ampere um, for a um, critical current that will correspond around 200 uh, ohm. And we achieve pretty low disorder on wafer scale uh, with 4% uh, um, or 9 ohm variation uh, across the full 4-inch uh, wafer. 
and then we can measure this uh, device and uh, uh, we can measure the IV of a single junction. And this, we start to get some uh, uh, unexpected result. Uh, while the design is um, uh, um, um, made uh, in order to obtain uh, five uh, microamp, we just get one order of magnitude less in critical current. And, uh, um, and this is very strange because the, res the normal resistance uh, should confirm or uh, ideally confirm that value. Um, but nevertheless, we can uh, measure uh, a full, um, the full chain. And um, here I'm, I'm reporting the full transmission with pump on and pump off. And if you concentrate it with the pump off, we can see that we don't see any phase match matching structure. So we actually don't know if uh, the frequency of our resonator is cut among the full uh, uh, bandwidth or is uh, completely off from the, um, uh, from the mesh of bandwidth. But uh, nevertheless, we can uh, try to pump this um, uh, chain and see that in some region, very narrow, we see an uh, increase on transmission. And we are just investigating w uh, what uh, um, this can this can come from. These are very preliminary results from uh, um, basically two weeks ago. But nevertheless, we can keep diving a bit in this uh, um, system. We can see that if we don't, uh, if we now just try to measure the power spectral density, we, we see that uh, if we just put a signal in the chain at in this uh, bandwidth, we see, of course, just the signal. But then uh, when we switch the pump on, also the idler um, appear. Of course, you can see also all this conversion from the pump in uh, full, uh, uh, full other modes that, uh, again, we are trying to investigate. And um, at the same time, we can try to see uh, signal, uh, signal to noise stress improvement. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, a true in the fridge, so this is just uh, made not take into account the chain loss. It's just the ratio between pump on, pump off. But nevertheless, in a small region, we can see um, a signal to noise improvement. And uh, um, finally, I, will, I would like to show you uh, uh, this additional uh, uh, characterization that we made that is the, what we think is pump depletion due to um, conversion in different modes. So here you can see um, the um, noise um, power spectral density uh, measure with different value of the pump. And you can see that uh, if we go from a small pump, the blue, uh, we get, uh, in this case, minus 95 dBm of uh, um, pump tr transmission pumped. But then if we increase the pump, the <laughs> the we will get much more noise or uh, incoherent uh, emission while the pump gets very much depleted. And again, if we still get even higher value of pump, the, the noise floor goes down and the pump again starts to go up. So we can repeat this experiment with different value and we indeed see that the pump starts to go down and then it recovers up. Uh, as I mentioned, these are very preliminary results uh, since the uh, first realization just uh, was cooled down um, the day before our flight, so, but still is, uh, is uh, very encouraging. And um, so with this, I want to wrap up. So uh, we achieved to fabricate a chain of 2,000 junction if it wasn't perfect, and uh, uh, we measure some gain. We are aware that uh, it's nothing comparable for what uh, we already saw, but uh, it's just a first realization. Uh, the f future step will be, of course, try to understand uh, where our fabrication imperfection come from and uh, make a full uh, functioning tupa, uh, as well as try to develop uh, tri-layer um, uh, in-house so we don't have to buy the tri-layer, maybe this giving, again, advantage on, on the fabrication. And uh, we want to use this process not only for uh, other experiments like you know, in our optomechanical uh, system, but also um, design uh, uh, quantum metamaterial or making uh, other useful devices, maybe broadband, broadband single photon detector. And with this, I would like to acknowledge all the LPQM uh, uh, circuit team from uh, Professor Kippenberg Group. Thank you.
Yes. Oh. Yeah. So. So sorry. So you're saying that why this is much lower, much higher than this? Uh, I don't know. And uh, um, maybe it's possible. So there is. You see, there is also all this noise that is generated, and uh, we don't know that where that come from. We believe that in in this particular measurement, the pump was very large, so maybe it's getting many co other frequency components. I, I mean, it's getting many other frequency components. We just don't know if it's noise or not, uh, and maybe part of the energy goes there. But uh, I'm sorry, this, this is really just done uh, uh, before the March meeting. Yes. Uh, do I need to repeat? So um, he asked about uh, our measurement chain for uh, measuring this. So it's the simplest you can imagine. You have just uh, um, alternated the input line. We have uh, alternated input line for signal. Then we have uh, 20, um, sorry, 50 dB uh, alternated line with the directional cover for the pump. And these two signals uh, mix with the directional coupler, and then uh, you get the amplification, then amped. Okay, of course, isolator, amped, and uh, yes, we have amped. But again, these, these are unfortunately not with true without true. So it's not 20 dB real uh, SNR improvement. This is just pump on, pump off. We will need the through to make it a real calibration. Thank you.